Seasonal Affective Disorder, also known as SAD, SAD, is a very serious condition that affects approximately 15 million Americans every single year. Women are more susceptible than men to get this condition, although it can happen to anybody, any gender across the boards. I want to bring some awareness to this condition to you, and I want to give you some tips on how you can beat it and battle it. In the worst of conditions, severe depression and anxiety can kick in, and even suicidal thoughts. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to live a happy, healthy life. I want you to be able to go outside and play with your kids and your grandchildren. I want you to have good, happy relationships with everybody. I want you to spread positive chi, and I want you to receive positive chi. I want you to give hugs, receive hugs. And I want you to be the best you that you possibly can. So, I have accumulated a few tips I'm going to run past you, and I want you to be the best you that you can possibly be. So, stay tuned, and let's get started. My first tip is this. Do not sit around all day like a hermit. I am nice and comfy cozy right now on my couch, and there's a time and place for this thing right here. But I highly suggest you don't sit here for eight or 10 hours in a row serial watching one of your favorite shows on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Here's the deal. When you sit for long periods of time, you get better at sitting. It causes back pain. It causes bad posture. It misaligns your organs. It causes you to be lethargic. When you're in pain, you're gonna be even more depressed and anxious. When you're in back pain, that's not a good thing, that's a bad thing. When your posture is bad, that's a bad thing, not a good thing. You wanna do everything you can to contribute to positive emotional health and physical health as well. Because the better you feel physically, the better you're gonna feel mentally. Sitting around all day on the couch isn't gonna get it done. This whole social distancing crap that we used to do when that condition was going around a while ago, that's the worst possible thing you can do, especially in the winter. And it should be called anti-social distancing, by the way, because what's social about it? Nothing. You need to get social. Go to church functions. Go to the gym. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Go to, I don't care if it's bingo. I don't care if it's line dancing. I don't care if it's concerts. I don't care what it is. Go to local gatherings. Look people in the eye. Make eye contact. Put your phone in your pocket. Shut it down. Put it on mute. And act like you care about other people. And that's going to reciprocate back to you. And others are going to care for you as well. So, do not sit on the couch all day long. Don't be a hermit. Get outside. Get out there and mingle with people. The next tip I have for you about how to beat seasonal affective disorder is go to the freaking gym. I'm standing in the freaking gym right now. See the cardio machines above me? See the grass behind me? There's weight machines behind me. There's a freeway room over there. Build strength, build muscle, lose weight. It's that simple. You lose weight, you're gonna improve your self-confidence and you're gonna to have to concentrate on what you're doing. There's cardio machines up there. You can burn a lot of calories on those cardio machines. Plus, you get a big, huge endorphin release when you're up there on a treadmill or a stair machine or a Jacob's Ladder or a rowing machine, it doesn't really matter. Your body doesn't know the difference between any one of those. It just knows that it's being worked and it's being moved. Movement helps improve brain function. Movement helps improve mood and it lowers anxiety and depression. Absolute fact. And I'm gonna go one step farther. Incorporate cross body patterns into your workouts as well. What is a cross body pattern? It's when you cross the midline of your body like this. I'm gonna do a demonstration for you. This is a medicine ball. So, you're gonna take this medicine ball and you're gonna draw a circle over your head. You're gonna step backwards and then you're gonna swing it behind you. Then you're gonna come forward Swing around your head the opposite direction, step backwards, chop it this way. So what just happened? I'm crossing the midline of my body right here, right here, then I'm stepping backwards and I'm crossing it again. Then I come back around and I'm doing the same thing this way. So spice up your gym workouts, at least at the bare minimum, go to the gym, work out, do some strength training, do some cardio, do some stretching, do some yoga, I don't care what it is. But if you really, really wanna dig deep in reversing seasonal affective disorder, Grab yourself a medicine ball and do some crossbody patterns. But again, it doesn't really matter what the implement is because your body doesn't know if this is a medicine ball or if it's a dumbbell or if it's a, a, a brick from out in the parking lot. All it knows is that it's being activated and a lot of neurons are being fired up. That's going to help improve your brain function and it's also going to improve your mood. So that's my next tip right there. I am actually going to go over two tips in one right now, and that is this. First things first, do good deeds for other people. When you shift the focus away from yourself, and you start to do good things for other people without expectation of anything in return, magic starts to happen. Your mood starts to imp improve. Your sleep starts to improve. Your relationships with people start to improve. You become more positive. So do kind things for people. Open doors for them. Go grocery shopping for your neighbors. Yeah, do that. Um, get people's mail. Watch people's dogs. Walk people's dogs. Walk your neighbor's dog if they can't do it. Do good deeds for people. And what I like to do is shovel people's driveways. Yeah, this is my driveway right here. I'm shoveling it. I'm doing a good deed for me. Shovel your own driveway as well, especially if it's winter like this and you have a lot of snow where you have like, I don't know, the powder's about this high out here at this time of year for us. But it doesn't matter if it's two inches of snow or six inches of snow or if it's ice and you're on the East Coast, throw some cinders 
on your neighbor's driveway. Go over and help them out. Help out your fellow man and woman out there. And always use proper form when you're shoveling snow, by the way, which is this. You wanna make sure to bend at the knees, pick up your shovel, and then toss. Keep your abs nice and tight, and then do this. Wow, the snow's backlashing on me because the banks are so high. Anyway, that's snow shoveling. Now, the second thing I wanna to talk to you about is get outdoor exposure. Get your body exposed to cold temperatures. Wear sleeveless shirts, wear t-shirts like this out in the cold, even for a little bit of time every single day. Cryotherapy, when you expose your body to cold, it improves your mood, it balances your hormones, it helps you sleep better. If you sleep better, everything else is gonna come into frame perfectly. And there's this thing called contrast bathing. Have you heard of it? It's when you expose your body to cold and you expose your body to heat back and forth. So you go from like a cold bath to a hot bath back and forth, or you can jump into a pile of snow and then jump into a hot tub outside. Back and forth, just also expose your body to the cold. And the sun is coming out right now. Get as much sun exposure as you possibly can every single day, even if it's cold outside. Just knuckle down and bear it. When you get sun exposure, vitamin D is gonna be released in your body, and that is a hormone that helps produce, that is a vitamin that helps boost testosterone and other key hormones in your body, and it helps improve your mood, okay? All it takes is a few minutes a day, you'll get used to it after a while, all right? So there is my, I don't know what tip I'm on, third or fourth, maybe both of those. Stay tuned for the next one. Okay, next up on my list of battling and beating seasonal affective disorder is take your time and learn a pastime, skill, or a hobby of some kind. Take time to do that. You can do crossword puzzles. You can do regular puzzles with pieces and put them all together because let's face it, life is nothing but a big you know, box of puzzle pieces anyway, and we always have to figure it out. You can take up dancing lessons. That's a great one. It's good to fire up neurons in the brain. Do that by yourself. Go country line dancing, find a partner to take with you and learn how to do swing dancing and all these different complex movement patterns. That's gonna help spark your brain up. It's gonna give you um, an element that might be lacking in your life and it sure beats sitting on the couch all day long during the, the dismal, dark, gray months of the winter season. You can also play the guitar, which I have right here. Let's see if I can still hit a G chord. <clears throat> oh yeah, that was pretty clean. Let's try a C and a D and a G. Practice skills like this. It's gonna keep your brain occupied and it's gonna really go far in treating seasonal affective disorder and general anxiety and depression. And you can also do one more thing, which is my personal favorite, and that is Indian club swinging. Okay, that was fun. As you can see, we're now in the kitchen. And you didn't think we we're gonna get through a whole entire video talking about seasonal affective disorder and brain problems without addressing food now, did you? Well, food is quintessential. Here's the problem we have. During the winter months when it's gray and dreary outside, we have a tendency to sit on the couch over there and watch TV for long hours at a time and eat foods that are not necessarily healthy and then overindulge in them and eat them late at night as well. What does that prob problem cause? Weight gain. What does weight gain cause? Depression. What does it contribute to? Anxiety. What does it also contribute to? Physical pain. And it makes you more unhappy and you eat more food and you sit for longer periods of time. Let's avoid all that. Okay? And let's eat some key foods that are going to help boost brain health and function as well. For example, greens, baby spinach, romaine hearts. I highly suggest you get romaine hearts because at the bottom core right there, when you get down to that part, chew on it just like a rabbit would and you're going to see this white substance called lacticarium also known as um, something opium, healthy opium, lettuce opium, I think that's what they call it. The experts call it that. It has a, an effect where it releases neurotransmitters in the brain to help improve your mood and make you more positive. So make a big salad with some of this, one of these, chop it up really far down, and then add some sprouts to it as well because they're very alkaline and good for you. And put some of these in there, walnuts. What does that look like? Kind of interesting, isn't it? Looks like a brain, that's what? A food that looks like a body part is meant to improve the health of that said body part. So eat walnuts, high omega-3s. Omega-3s are good for brain function. They're also good to help boost your mood and help you concentrate better. They're gonna help affect, they're gonna help with seasonal affective disorder. Wild caught salmon is also good to put in your salad. High in omega-3s. Cacao nibs, cacao powder, raw chocolate, high in antioxidants, help, helpful for the brain as well. I also like these things called cacao wafers. I'll show them to you, I'll pull one out. You may not have heard of these. 
Look at those babies. They look like vanilla chocolate. They don't taste like it. They don't have a lot of sweetness at all. But I highly suggest you take them and crumble them up and throw them into your bowls of oatmeal and stuff like that. All right? Now, I'm not done talking about diet. We also want to avoid late night eating. We want to avoid late night drinking. We want to avoid overconsumption of alcohol. And we want to help boost our gut health. Because if you boost your gut health, your brain is going to respond and you're going to be a happier person all the way through because everything starts in the gut and it goes that way. So, 55 to 60 grams of fiber a day is going to help improve your gut health. Eating foods that are prebiotic and probiotic is going to help improve your gut health. Asparagus, bananas, apples, um, beans, um, what else? Kimchi, sauerkraut, kombucha, kombucha. All these things are really good sources of pre and probiotics and you want to get them in your diet. And aim for 55 to 60 grams of fiber every single day. And of course, we want to avoid all the junk food as well if we can. Now remember, there's a difference here between general health and trying to get out of seasonal affective disorder. If you're going to put the sacrifice in and do these things, it's going to help you and it's going to get you out of there. Now, one last thing about diet, let's avoid the food altogether and do some fasting. Yeah, let's try to get one fast a week, 24 hours a day. Maybe once a month, do a 48 hour fast during the winter months and then do 16 to 18 hours every day in between. Ooh, why, why? That's scary, right? No, it's not scary. When you fast for a certain amount of hours, your body produces this substrate of protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. And when that happens, it guess what? It boosts your mood. It improves your brain function. It improves your cognitive function. And it is one of the things that decelerates as we age. And if you can boost BDNF, you can crack the code and reverse the aging process. And if you do some fasting during the winter, you can boost your mood and prevent seasonal affective disorder. Okay, case closed on that. Next tip. Alrighty, I think I've got just one more thing to say on this whole series of tips on how to beat and battle and fight seasonal affective disorder with both guns blazing, baby. And that is this, love on somebody. I don't know if you ever heard that before. Do you know how underrated hugs are? Human connection, human touch. It is so underrated, it's not even funny. It doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion. You should strive to get eight hugs a day for eight seconds. And any more than that is gonna be bonus. You can look it up on any psychology website and they're going to tell you all the benefits of hugs. One of them is it boosts your brain function. It makes you happy. It makes you positive. It keeps your head out of the gutter. So try to get as many hugs as you can. I mean, don't just walk down the street and hug strangers, obviously, but hug people you know. Don't be afraid to hug people. No one's going to judge you. No one's going to look down their nose at you. It's totally natural. If you have a significant other, hug them. Hug them often and do things with them. Make dinner together. Go on walks together. Walk the dog together. Participate in hot yoga. Participate in gym workouts. Look at my page. I have all this stuff all over the place. Those things are quintessential in keeping your mood lifted and your brain power high, and it's going to help prevent seasonal affective disorder. Now, having said that, I'm going to go to the other side of the coin, and this is the dark side of things. You need to get rid of every single person, place, thing, object that causes you great, a great amount of stress and anxiety and depression and force you to sit on that couch and serial watch Netflix. Okay? I don't care if it is a significant other, if it is a husband or wife, if it is a mate, if it is a family member, a coworker, a friend, whoever it is, if you have a really toxic person in your life and they're so toxic that they're causing you suicidal thoughts, yeah, that's real. I I'm not BSing you here. That happens. You need to go take the head off the beast, get them out of your life. You gotta do the math here. What's more important, your happiness and your wellness or the possibility of you wanting to commit suicide all day because you have a negative toxic person in your life or a couple of them or if you have something in your life that's causing it. Maybe your car keeps breaking down and it's causing you massive problems. You gotta find a way to get rid of the car. You gotta get, find a way to get rid of that person. And then do some of those other things I talked about. Take up a skill and replace them with the skill. And then you can practice on that and focus on something positive and always move forward. And on that note, we conclude this video on seasonal affective disorder. Remember, the statistics are staggering. A lot of people suffer from this condition. It is very real, and people suffer from depression and anxiety and all these things in between. All the tips I mentioned in this video can be applied to any one of those situations any time of year, but especially during the winter when the sun is not out as much and people are lacking vitamin D. That's a critical um, nutrient that we need to help boost our mood and keep ourselves happy. So I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm gonna mention it now. Make sure to get a good source of vitamin D supplement during the winter too. That can also help improve your brain function and benefit you from a happiness standpoint. Lastly, make sure to like and share this video and please subscribe to my page. And if you have any questions or comments, please hit me up anytime. I'm always here for you and I'm trying to do what's best for you because I care about you. I would hug you if I saw you. So if you see me, come give me a hug.
Okay, till next time, this is Kevin David Rail reporting live.